My name is Johannes Keating. I am a therapist and every day in my practice with my clients I see how defensiveness is a killer of relationships. And so this is going to be my first vlog in a series of vlogs where I want to talk about relationship killers. I'm excited to go deeper into the topic for today, the relationship killer that I want to look at closer today is defensiveness. And so that begs the question, what is defensiveness? Most of us know it when we see it. We feel it in ourselves sometimes, obviously we see it in other people. But, uh, you know, if we really look at the nitty gritty of what defensiveness really entails, it's the categorical denial of the other person's experience, the merit or validity of the other person's experience. And so that can take many different forms. It could be simply not taking an interest, not asking, you know, about the other person's feelings or how their day was. It could be taking the position that it's my way or the highway. It could be taking the position that the way I remembered an event or the way I feel about something is be all and all, end of discussion, right? Your experience is not factored in, it's not valid. Feeling close to the other person and them feeling close to you actually doesn't require that you agree about everything. It doesn't. People often think it does, but it doesn't. It simply requires that you don't take the position that the way you see it is be all and all, end of discussion. It requires that you allow for the other person's experience, their perspective, you allow, you acknowledge that the way they see it, based on who they are, is reasonable. So you might ask what to do about defensiveness, either when we see it in ourselves or in other people, right? Beautiful question. So if you realize that you're being defensive, you hear it in your tone, you feel it, then the first thing to realize is that you're having feelings. You're having feelings that you're not handling well or you're dealing with them by becoming defensive. So take a step back, you know, take a little time out if you need to and simply acknowledge what your feelings are, what's getting stirred up in you. It could be the other person's tone that's off-putting to you that you might experience as prosecutorial or shaming or it could be that the other person isn't doing anything wrong at all. It's simply the topic that is difficult for you, that touches a raw spot in you. Uh, whatever it is, you're having feelings. So the first step is to identify your own feelings. I am getting irritated. I am annoyed. Whatever it is, frustrated, angry. So that's number one. Become aware of your own emotions. Then, step number two is to effectively communicate those and say, I'm so sorry, I'm not able to really participate in this conversation because the topic is stirring up these feelings in me. Or your tone is really aggravating me, right? And so I'm not able to really join you and participate in this discussion because all I can think about is how annoyed I am with you for using that tone or how annoyed I am at you for approaching this topic that's so painful to me. All right? So it's very important that when we express these feelings that we don't do it in a way that is defensive. In other words, not badgering, not shaming, not lecturing. So the idea isn't to make the other person feel bad. You know, you don't want to guilt trip the other person. If you do, you're still in your defenses. You're still expressing your defensiveness. Crucial ingredients in being non-defensive involve acknowledging your feelings, being aware, I'm getting aggravated, angry, or I'm having painful feelings, whatever it is, right? Acknowledging that and clearly communicating those feelings without being shaming or prosecutorial or guilt tripping. And then briefly why, without being wedded to that the perception of why is really the truth, it's simply how we perceive it, and then stopping right? Allowing the other person some space to respond, okay? And so I just outlined some ideal responses, some non-defensive responses, right, that would be ideal for feeling close to each other. 
But say the other person doesn't respond that way. Say they respond with their defensiveness. And let's say they say, well, that's, that's nonsense. So they might dismiss us, they might blow us off, or whatever. Your response, if you want to be emotionally intimate and invite dialogue as opposed to defensiveness, should be something to the effect of, you're doing it again. Like, this is exactly what I don't like. Your tone is off-putting, you're dismissing me right now, I really don't like this. This is so off-putting. And then again, stop, right, allowing them a chance to respond. Hopefully, the other person will respond more supportively and not be defensive. But if they're still defensive, if they're still in their defenses, you just want to say it again. This is part of assertiveness training, really. You're, you're doing it again. You're still blowing me off. You're still being rude. And I don't like this. And stop, right? Allow for a response. And if for a third time the other person treats you poorly, right? They're defensive yet again then you just have to say, I'm not willing to be treated this way. We can try again in an hour, but this conversation for now is over. It's important to acknowledge that when we are being defensive, which we all are at times, it's an automatic process, none of us are perfect, that even though it's not our intention necessarily, we are actually conveying the message that the other person's feelings are important. And so if you want to undo and turn a corner on this toxic self-defeating relationship killing process of defensiveness it's crucial that once you have the presence of mind you come to that you say look I'm realizing I'm being defensive right now or I was just defensive just then and I'm really sorry I was really shutting you down and treating you like your feelings don't matter that they're not valid they're not important and I'm really sorry I was annoyed and I wasn't handling it well, well